Hey guys, I'm out here at Bravo. Um, over here in Tucson, uh, Camp Conklin by Santa Rita Park. We are having our volunteer donor support appreciation barbecue. Um, it's an event for the community to come to Bravo Camp Conklin to see what we're doing, what we're about, have some food, meet with the community, and um, meet our vets, talk with our vets. This is what it's about. It's about our vets. It's not about me. It's not about Lewis. I'm going to go through right now and show you the food that has been made thus far. I know Lewis and other people are coming down. Alan's going to be here, and, and we're going to... We're gonna have some good times, but What's that? this looks what is it? amazing. This goes all day, as long as I have food, as long as I have people coming, we're gonna be cooking. So uh, we got Fred and Dominic watching some movies, I don't know. Say hi guys. Hi. You know, he's working hard, ain't he guys? <laughs> Alright, well. So what's up? There's, I don't know what that Excuse is. Excuse my French. Hey, so <laughs> you know, hey, um, you're, you're we like to get nice and dirty down here, but that's only because we like the the hard work. Is that a crowd? Don't, kind don't, of don't, don't, don't judge me <laughs> on my outfit, okay? All right, thank you. Have a nice day. You guys aren't deaf, we know, but he thinks everybody's deaf, so he's loud. Anyway, VOP. He loves VOP. Hey, Rob, Michelle, do you have anything to say for uh, VOP and all of our supporters? We rock. We love you. You rock. And um, we are extremely thankful for everything that you guys do for us and for our vets. Yes, y'all are truly um, blessings. Thank you. Yes. God bless everyone, and, and, and thank you. It's because, because of you that made us who we are. And, and we just want to say God bless you all, and thank you very much. And Uh, well, he started this man, but yeah, I, I he sent me out here. You're his hands, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. I love it. And are you a vet? Or no, I'm an advocate. I actually do grief counseling for the moms of the 22. We have a ministry, so like this camp's named after Brandon Conklin. Today happens to be his birthday. Um, his mom, Kyle Barty, we call her Mama B. But uh, every, we're building 22 camps. Every camp's gonna be named after a veteran that we've lost to suicide in this country. It's 22 veteran suicides a day. But each camp will be named after one of the sons or daughters. Their families who are in our ministry can see their name live on, but then they see us out here trying to help their brothers and sisters, the other vets. And then the returning Iraq war and Afghan vets, when they come back, if they can't assimilate into our society, because everyone fights over race, religion, and politics, those three things we eliminate from our program because it's just too divisive. So when they come, we put their skills that they used over there out here in the community for good. They'll do search and rescue, they'll do security patrols, they can do recon to help us track where the drugs are coming from. So if we have a particular lab or a particular drug dealer that targets the homeless and preys upon their addictions, we go after them. So it gives them a purpose. And then when you put our um, older vets with our younger vets, then it shows the younger ones that they can survive, that no matter what they're going through, their problems are not as big as the individuals that we're finding on the streets. So it's a program to combat the veteran suicide epidemic and take care of these guys that's been forgotten out Thank here. You. Jim, actually, we found Jim uh, over a year ago. 
Yep. And then he went yeah. AWOL and we disappeared and we get found him again the, about a week ago. <laughs> yeah, Jim Jim? that's Jim yeah. Jim. He was actually, he was one of the reasons why we first started. The vets were being up, attacked on you the streets. Me? The yeah. first week How of every doing? month they get a check. Most of them get a check. He gets 1700 a month. He, he chooses to be out here. You know, he doesn't really want to go into a home right now. And when he wants to, he knows he can. But the gangs were targeting they were knocking them out of their wheelchairs they take their phones they take their money and they don't call the cops they, they don't really want to deal with the cops so they're just revolving victims so we started forming patrols and then we started pulling them off the streets we decided that we were going to start building them camps to go to and from there it just turned into a statewide search and rescue so until we find every veteran in our state, we don't argue over race, religion, or politics. We go and get the job done, just like we sent them over to get the job done. It works. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. There's going to be a lot of um, the nursing students that are going to go into the hospitals. Would it be okay for them to like mention this if they see a vet that they have a in? homeless vet that's yeah. getting ready to be discharged yeah. and doesn't have a place to go? They can contact us. Okay. Now, it's, you know, we've been open here over a year, yeah. so there's probably about 40 or 50 veterans out there that have come through this program, but they've been kicked out right. after so many chances. If they're bringing the hard illicit drugs in or doing anything illegal that threatens the camp, we have to tell them no too. That's the hardest right. point. But we give them so many chances. You know, we do our best but anybody yeah and they don't even have to be a veteran if it's a family let us know yeah if there's if they're older if they have a disability or something and, and they're vulnerable on the streets like they can't protect themselves we'll get them you know we'll take them in as long as they are trying to do something to better themselves even if it's just getting up every day and doing dishes at this camp they're doing something positive, you know, so we'll take them and we'll help them out as much as we can. Now, can we, we are from the U of A nursing program and we have been working with Pima County Health, Health Department <laughs> and we were trying to figure out like what we wanted to come here and talk to you guys. Because when we came here, we were immediately drawn to you guys and we wanted to kind of bring something that we thought would be helpful and not just come and show up. And then we got to meet the people from Arizona Poison and Drug Center, and we were like, this might be something helpful and useful, and hopefully we can give you guys some information that you didn't already know and use it, okay? <laughs> but before we get, begin, a little disclaimer, we are not poison control experts, no. um, so we're presenting you the information that we received from them. And and this is more for your dogs, and what happens is your dogs tend to want to like lick them and play with them, and so they're getting the poison on there. Tongue, and we usually what they say is to just rinse the dog's mouth out with water. So the Arizona coral snake. Um, there's actually another snake. Is it the king snake? The king snake. That looks yeah. very similar, but I have a little bit, a little rhyme for you to remember. Um, where did it go? Red yellow kill a fellow. Yes. Red yeah. on black. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the pattern to distinguish them from their harmless friends. The my medication identification or symptoms after taking the medication just no uh, uh, in the mouth no, nothing just leave them they're beautiful look at them and that's it the harm ranges from just a little uh itchiness to hospitalization needs so just stay away from them feel free to grab any brochures or any information we have magnets too or more stickers i'd like to get one of the brochures yeah, come yeah, in. yeah. is there only one of the ones that are in the binder yeah, we're just, we're just we have, yeah. we'll leave one for the med tent, and Thank then if you, you want anything, you, 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 you know, what, whatever. This is Doc. He's one of our paramedics. He's one of my co-founders. He's been with me since the beginning. And, you know, one of the big things that we need is just, you know, people to come out here and, for lack of a better word, like, just kind of fellowship with people, you know. And, you know, you can do basic first aid you know kind of thing i mean we've got a guy up at uh up at alpha who just had to have uh part of his finger removed yeah i was you know and he was he was talking to me about his stitches and you know and that kind of thing you know and um yeah. we've got another guy up there with uh diabetic issues you know and it that's just some of those things where you know preventative wise doing things like making sure hey are you staying current on your insulin are you doing this are you doing that because i mean lewis and i are back and forth between three bases <laughs> so we need as many volunteers at each base uh, as we can get 
you know, and having medically trained staff, you know, come in and, and volunteer it, it is an absolute blessing. It takes a huge, I mean, I get phone calls at two in the morning from other bases, hey, doc, what do we do? You know, so, but um, yeah, anything that you can do to help, anything that we can do to help educate, Okay. We use one social media platform okay. and then we share the stories of the ones that we're allowed to share their stories with because we want to protect their confidentiality. Absolutely. Some people don't want their name and face out there. Most of them that come through here, they're actually receptive to it because they see all these families that come in and they treat them like human beings. So we're able to... Uh, we're able to tell their stories, but we cover social media with everything we do. When we do our night operations, we do live videos, when we work with law enforcement, when we go and um, search camps and we go and find a new camp and we send a team in there. See, we don't take money. We can't take money, we can't take checks or any of that. This is actually a Christian ministry. What we're doing is missionary work, but there's no money involved. With no money, there's no government regulation. We don't have a permit to do any of this. But, you know, we're at over 400 people who have been taken from the streets into a better place in the past 18 months. And that's without raising money. None of us have ever been paid. We've never been paid. If we get paid, once again, in comes regulation. So it's pure charity, you know, it's no tax break, no anything. He the calls business it is a self-sacrificing. Self-sacrificing organization. It's one of the few SSOs in the nation that operates under the Good Samaritan Law, which is protected by the First Amendment. So, I mean, it's... We, we cover everything. If they need uh, soup or water, we go to Facebook, make a post. Bravo Base needs water. All of a sudden, families that are so watching, they'll pick up. that's how we can find out because yep. Sam told me that you needed plastic utensils, and so I brought yes. that. But so Yes, yeah, thank we, you for that, by the way. But, but And that was, I was thrilled to do that. I just, you know, you just like to give what somebody needs. And so when other people ask us what how you guys need, we can just go on Facebook to find out. Is yep. that yes. I, now we can start accepting clothes. For a, for, a, for a little oh, okay. bit, we, we cleaned this out and we took 15 truckloads to different organizations that don't sell it for profit. They They're donate not it to like sell us. It. So anything so we like, forward, they can't Church sell on the it Street, anything. Gospel Rescue Mission, um, the Veteran Wing for the uh, Salvation Army, all that stuff went to. So now we have a manageable, usable stuff that we know we know what we have. Law enforcement helping us. They'll come pick up blankets, hygiene packs, and then when they're going, when they're going out and around and they see a homeless person, instead of stopping and you know giving them the rundown, what's your name, why are you doing here, it's a here's a blanket, here's a hygiene pack, and that's how they initiate the first contact, which is important, like I said, because you need everyone in the community to work together. We don't need to be segregated. We're segregated from rich to poor, from you know law enforcement to regular civilian. I mean, we try to get everyone working together. And we've been very lucky. Tucson Police Department's been outstanding. They've had our back, you know, since we first started. They stood up to the mayor when they tried to evict us and said, we're not enforcing. So they trespassed code enforcement from here. So they can't come out with their permits and try to, you know, the, the camp runs itself. We try to build them and put the homeless in charge because they know how to take each other better, care of each other better, but you have to have supervision. So that's why our volunteers and families coming in because if they see something going on, they can let us know so we can get ahead of it. We've had some people come in and they'll use it as a place to start running drugs out of or running prostitution out of. So we have to prevent those things from happening. And that's probably one of your biggest challenges. Yeah. Well, the biggest challenge we have is getting uh, people. It's people. It, is it, this isn't easy. And, you know, um, the only reward you get, which I think is better than a paycheck, is we can go to veterans who are in their own homes now. And people we found on the corner holding a sign, hungry, God bless, U.S. vet. And then all of a sudden, you know, we can sit at their dinner table and have dinner with them. We can take food over to them. We take care of them from point of contact all the way up to housing. And once they're housed, we furnish their homes. You know, we take food block boxes to supplement them because most of them are on fixed incomes. But it's the fact that you know you've made a direct impact in that individual's life. They're no longer out there alone. They're no longer vulnerable on the streets. They're in a safe place. And you've given them the second chance that everyone deserves. You never run out of second chances. No such thing as a third chance. That vehicle over there, I've had it seven months. I've put 27,000 miles on it. 
running between bases. I, I went out to Birmingham, Alabama and showed them how to start a program out there. You know, um, it's, it, it's, it's constant work. It's constant work, and that's what you know. Lewis can can vouch for this. We don't get much sleep. I don't get sleep. <laughs> I think I slept three hours last night, and then I had to come down here, and then we got to go back. <laughs> so it's you know it's it's constant work, you know. But you know, I I brought my my 17 year old son out to uh, Alpha Base up there in Mesa, and he got to see what what we do. His buddy saw my car parked out here and he was like, your dad's living at a homeless camp? What's going on? And my son was embarrassed. And then I took him out there to the base and showed him how we operate, what we do, went out, did, you know, food box drops and, and you know, and, and clothing drops. You guys you know, brought a vet back, in, in brought an Army Ranger back too. He was part of that when yep. you guys brought the Army Ranger back. You know, and uh, all of these different, you know, areas in Phoenix that are just so badly, badly hurting, you know, but we just can't seem to get a camp there yet, you know, but we're working on it. But when we went to go home, my son was like, I can't believe this is what you do. And I said, you feel that right there? You feel it right there? And he was like, yeah, I said, that's called pride. I'm all, you did good work today. You know, and that's how we get paid. You know, um, I'm very blessed, you know, with people that donate, you know, gas cards so that I can do all this running around. You know, um, everything's accountable. Like, we stop for gas on the way here, receipts sitting with the gas card. You know, that way everybody knows I'm not out there buying liquor with it or buying cigarettes with it. Like, it went into the car. You know, so um we have got some of the most amazing volunteers um they're awesome it, it's brutal i i you know i don't but when i lay down at night i literally I, no matter what camp i'm at i'm looking at all these people who wouldn't be here they'd be out there god knows where you know living in what type of condition or environment you know not having anybody but you get them all together and they have each other. And then our families come in and they have our families and you know, our volunteers that work so hard. Uh, I sleep a lot better at night knowing, but we still have that on the other side. There's more out there. There's other places that we can build and provide for them. We're not done yet. Yeah, <laughs> we got 18 more camps to build. So, but we're not done. We're gonna build all 22 of them, so. Batman, how you doing? Good. I'm glad to finally meet you. I've uh, I've uh, been watching you a little bit on social media. Well, you know, it's a it's a very active position that I have. <laughs> I'm constantly running between bases. I mean, I've had this baby for I don't know. I think seven, eight months. I put twenty seven thousand miles on her. Twenty seven thousand miles. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's more than a quarter of a thousand, or a quarter of a hundred. You know, it's, uh, she's, she's definitely served our veterans right. I get lots of attention with her. Um, people asking questions all the time, I'm able to tell them about VOP and, and uh, you know, get more donations coming in, that kind of thing. Um, she's been the chase vehicle for multiple events um you know with our blue stripe program you know um so uh you know she gets requested at a lot of different events <laughs> okay okay so she's kind of like a, a billboard so to speak yeah, but a flashier one yeah she's a, a rolling show car you know and uh you know at helps us make lots of contacts and and let people know about the organization and what we're out here trying to do and and uh you know i mean it's just it's a wonderful opportunity for me um to go out and serve the community and serve my fellow veterans and uh you know raise awareness you know about the 22 veteran suicides every day and uh i also work the veteran suicide hotline um you know so i hear all the stories and i talk to a lot of people and you know and we need all the help that we can get out here 
Okay, well, it sounds like you, you, you devote a lot of your time towards veteran suicide. Um, is there a personal story that kind of has inspired you to, to spend so much time? Because I, I know when, you know, people who devote themselves to such a subject, usually it, it, it has something personal to go with it. Is there something you want to share as far as that? I have... Uh I've lost a lot of friends, and uh, I want to make sure that that doesn't happen to other people, you know. And, uh, I mean, I talk to a lot of veterans every day and, and, you know, and try to keep them from giving up hope, you know. And coming out here, that's why I tell people all the time, you know, you come out, you come out to the base, you know, if you got an hour come out sit down chat with people you know get to know them just hang out yeah just hang out you know um it's not always about you know hey can you bring us cases of water or can you bring us food can be you know can you give us some time you know that that means so much to you know the men and women that are out here that you know may not have family anymore you know, uh, we have a lot of older veterans. We have a lot of younger ones, you know, uh, and it's one of those things where, you know, it just giving them that hour. Just some acknowledgement. A- a- acknowledgement and just make them smile, you know. I mean, uh, like uh, we've got people in recovery and, you know, that just need somebody to talk to. You know, we've got uh, guys that have uh, guys and girls that have, have have been through hell, been through war, been through, you know, their their friends dying, and, you know, and they just need somebody to make them smile. And you're not just a volunteer, but you're also a, a veteran yourself, right? Yes, I am. Um, I'm the co-founder of the organization with Lewis. Um, it, it's one of those things. He's the civilian. I'm the veteran, you know, um, and... You know, we work together and we work with lots of different organizations and churches and ministries and, you know, and we uh, we do the best that we can to reach as many people as possible. And you seem to be doing just that, man. Uh, we're, we're making strides. I mean, we went from, uh, you know, being harassed by the government to being protected by them now, you know, and that's... Uh, you know, that was a huge stride for us when the governor stepped in and said, uh-uh, leave him alone. Which governor? Uh, governor, who is it, Busey? Ducey? Ducey. Doug, uh, Doug Ducey. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Greg Stanton up there in Phoenix um, has shut down Camp Charlie, um, you know, and kind of chased us out and, you know, and uh, then... A week later, turned around and said, you know, that Phoenix has a zero homeless veteran population. Really? Because I got 83 of them right here, <laughs> you know. So it's um, yeah. that, that that's quite an accomplishment in itself. I've, I've talked to other homeless advocates who have tried to do homeless issues up in Phoenix and they say they just throw you in jail. I mean, they, they pretty much have effectively shut up homeless activism but here you are as a homeless activist and you've actually earned the respect how, how do you think that happened um a lot of hard work a lot of hours um a lot do you, did you have to butt some heads as, yeah yeah we've bumped heads with uh you know with different organizations but um you know we've got a lot of respect from law enforcement now Um, You know, instead of going out and arresting these guys for being homeless, they bring them to us and say, hey, can you help them? You know, and we get them connected with organizations like CBI and, 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 you know, Valley Hospital, you know, get them into rehab, get them into housing, get them into, you know, get them the benefits that they need, you know, and get them transitioned off the street and into housing. I'm I'm a a paramedic, you know, and... um, when when you're a first responder, when you're uh, in law enforcement, uh, firefighter, uh, you know, paramedic, you know, you see people at their worst hour. You know, you see them when they are just 
absolutely broken when, you know, when... And that's the majority of what you see, right? Yeah. And, you know, and when you see somebody's house burning down and you're the responding paramedic, you know, that's really no different than what I do out here. You know, um, I, I spend time with people and, and try to help them, you know, rebuild, you know, and we have got such an amazing, um, support group, uh, support group uh, especially down here in Tucson, um, you know, that, I mean, up in Phoenix now we've got MCSO and eight, you know, DPS helping us out. Um, we've got, you know, uh, our, our base up in Dewey, um, which is doing amazing, you know, um, and it, when, when Lewis and I sat down and did the annual report, uh, we, we were both just blown away. I mean, we don't take a single dollar. If you tried to hand me a dollar right now, I can't take it. <laughs> I'll tell you to go over to Circle K and, you know, and, and buy a water and get me a gas card, you know, <laughs> go buy a bottle of water, you know, <laughs> something like that, because we don't take a dollar. And, and, um, you know, I, I guess I've, I, I under, I understand why that, you know, the virtue in that, but how, how would you, how would you explain that to someone who just quite doesn't get the, the virtue and the value of not accepting money? Basically, if we accept cash, then basically the government can step in and start regulating us. Okay. Um, so it, it's about freedom. Yeah. And it's about, you know, being able to uh, do what we do, how we do. And have there been times where you've been so stressed out um, that you've actually wa had to walk away and get some time to yourself? Too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there there have been times where, you know, uh, Lewis has had to shut down for, you know, a couple of days and I've had to shut down for a couple of days. And, you know, it's like because you just this is it's very very rewarding work but it's a lot of work you know and uh, it helps to get some solitude sometimes so you can reflect and recharge there, then there are times where i'll just hop in my car and play music you know and just be like everybody leave me alone for an hour <laughs> you know and everybody's like you okay yeah i'm fine just leave me alone you know and because you just gotta get your mind recentered because you you're out here and you're dealing with you know uh you know oh well there's a problem with this tent or you know hey we need this or hey this is going on or hey we need to do this well you're you're you basically know. dealing with a lot of the problems that law enforcement emergency responders deal with yeah them. yeah and, and you know and there are times where um you know, I'll be at a base and I'll be sound asleep and it's, hey, Batman, you know, we just, you know, we've got an injured vet that just came in. Right him up, you know. <laughs> so. And that can happen any time of the day, 24 hours. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been, you know, I've been working till one o'clock in the morning and then I get woken up at two and I don't get back to bed until like seven and I get like 30 minutes of sleep and then it's, hey, Batman, we need your help. And, okay, I'm up, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, one of the big things, and that's why I was saying about support staff, you know, and getting your infrastructure built first is you, you know, this is not a one man project. You know, um, it takes a lot of help. It takes a lot of volunteers, um, you know, to take care of this many people, you know, and it, it's one of those things that you just you can't do it alone. This is not like, a, hey, let's get me and two other people together and go do this. It's like, no, you need like 50, 60. We need like 100, you know, kind of thing, because it's a lot of work and you know, and sometimes staff just, and that's why I tell people, you know, come down for an hour, you know, come down, chat with them, help them out. And so I can take a nap because I'm going to be up all night, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, anytime anyone can come down and do anything, we appreciate it. You know, local businesses that come out here, um, you know, instead of going to Home Depot to get, you know, day laborers, come out here, pick up our vets. You know, help them out. 
you know, give them a little cash in their pocket so they quit bumming cigarettes off me. <laughs> so it's so it's not even about the people that I, that I'm able to interview. It's all these large group of people behind the scenes that I probably can't even get a chance to interview that makes it really happen. The it's, people behind the scenes. It's one of those things, you know, uh, from day to day, we have a varying number of people um, that will be out here. There are days, there are days where, um, yeah, see, here's TPD, backing us up. So we might, we might just have an issue. Well, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna. Oh no, they're just coming to check on us. Okay, let me see, uh, get a shot, see what's going on. got recovery veterans that we're, that we're trying to, um, you know, that we're trying to protect, okay. you know, and we told him to get away from the camp, hey, Dan. Gotcha. and he started all kinds of crap, you when know. You know Where's he at now? Yeah, how's it going, man? He's pushing, he's, he's pulling an orange cart. Uh, he put his uh, paraphernalia in his left pocket, but he knew we call you guys, so he went over to that big homeless camp in that park, so he probably passed his stuff off from there. But from what they're down. saying is he's one of the ones that they're all getting meth with. So he knows the meth connection. And then old man Mike over there with the long beard. So what, was he fighting with you guys today or what? No, we went over there because Fred over here, they took one of my old vets down in the tunnel last night and got him so spun out of his mind. They spent half the night trying to get him down. And, you know, we don't, we don't need that. And most he does is drink, but they're hey, pushing whoa. the meth oh, onto dude. these guys. So we went over there to tell them they've already been trespassed and they had their dopes and their paraphernalia just sitting right out on the blanket. You know, they had their big tall beers. And so we called you guys because they had drugs and paraphernalia out there in the hey, open. No, and they on. took one of my guys down into that tunnel and got him high last night. Right. But now they're back in the main park. Yep. Yeah. How's it going guys? What's up man, how you been? Good, good, you? Yeah. You guys remember this guy when he used to be one of the knucklehead troublemakers? No, nah, he's never knucklehead. He went through nine months of treatment, still sober to this day. To, you gotta talk to Ashley and the bike cops about that. Yeah. <laughs> I got He's an interview out of him. Corporal he Clark, spent six Corporal years Clark. over at that park. Yeah. I'm trusting. No one thought he'd ever quit Spice. No one of the co-founders. Yeah. Went Almost in treatment. He, yeah, he stayed in an extra three months before he came over here to make sure he was okay. Now he's over here helping other people get off of that shit. So. And then his date of birth as well. And we just got all of his warrants quashed, but apparently he doesn't appreciate it because he's still bringing drugs around our guys. And he's the one with the green bike orange yep. trailer? Yep. Okay. All right, we'll go take a look for him in the park. And then uh, we got we got another call going on right now uptown, so we may need to duck out for that in a minute. But we'll There's come anything back more vital yeah. than take care well, of Well, obviously, if they come back, call us uh, okay. call us again. And uh, are, do they know they're trespassed? They're yeah, they know. Them? Or, um, say if someone was watching this video, they wanted to start their own VOP style camp. Um, what would be, you know, what kind of suggestions would you would you have to offer them? Number one, don't take any money. Number two, uh, build your support structure before you put up a tent. Okay. Because um, we we tried to reopen Charlie a little too quick and we didn't have the support staff and uh we we ended up with some serious problems i mean i got punched jeff got uh you know assaulted by a bunch of guys with with guns and you know because he was there by himself you know and so that was right at the beginning right no that was like two months ago oh wow so um you know, you've got to get your support staff in line first. And always remember, don't take money. You can accept gift cards because then it's accountable. Like, somebody gave me a gas card for this. If you look in my car, the receipt's right there. And you know it's going for gas. There's no... Yeah, I'm not out buying cigarettes with it. I'm not out buying liquor with it. You know, it, that gas card, uh, you know, or that Shell gift card is going towards fuel for this vehicle doing all the runs between different bases so number one rule don't fall in the trap of accepting money yep okay yeah. you know and, and then number two get a support group before you put up a tent absolutely okay